tune you guys in. I'm at my house today doing a little bit of prep. Going to be doing a tree climbing competition here in a couple of days. Uh, this weekend, it's going to be out in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. So we're flying out and I'm really excited about that. So just prepping my bag of gear and I thought maybe some of you might be interested in what I'm going to bring. So this is your heads up if you happen to catch this. I'll uh, pick up this live video again in a few minutes and hopefully, hopefully some of you can tune in. Thanks. Bye. Oh, looks like there's a couple tuning in. I don't know if any of you guys have ever done tree climbing competitions, but they're a lot of fun. And it's really, especially as a new climber, it's so useful to see what other people do that optimizes for efficiency because uh, my data, I probably lost you guys. Someone had a good question though. Um, do, 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 do. What's the format of the climbing competition, Aaron? That's a good question. So the, this is one of the TCIA climbing competitions. So it kind of goes, it's in two parts. The first part is essentially a, it's kind of like a preliminary for everyone. So everyone goes through and they will uh, basically try five different events. And then depending on how they finish in those events, will determine whether or not they get to go to the master's part of the competition, which is kind of like a big, uh, it's a little bit of a combination of a few of the events and it combines them all into one. And usually there's only three or four people who get to do that because it's a timed event, but you get a lot of time. So I think it's like a 40 minutes or so per person to accomplish the master's climb. So the first five events, there's a speed climb, which you're tied in and you got to climb up a tree. Okay, usually it's a set route. Then there's the rope ascent, which is basically how fast can you go up a single line? Then there's the throw line competition which is like trying to get a throw line up into a tree and get your rope primary climb line set in the tree. Uh, and, and sort of the higher up and the more tricky the spot that it's set, the more points you get. And then there's the work climb where you start in the tree and you're moving around in the tree to try and hit these different stations. Where you, So that's a kind of a practice about how can you get to different parts of the tree as quickly and as efficiently as possible. And then there is the aerial rescue event where they've got a dummy in the tree and you got to get into the tree and perform a rescue and you're kind of talking out loud talking through the process of an actual what you might do in in the case of an actual emergency so that's kind of what the format is those are the five events uh each of those if you're if you score well based on your points and how safe you are and styled a couple other things um then you can you rank uh order based on your performance of those five events the top three usually and the top woman or two, depending on how many there are, uh, go to the masters the next day and they all do the same masters climb, which is one big tree um, and you got to get your robe set, hit all the stations, get out and pull your equipment out of the tree before the time is up, which uh, is, is really quite the challenge. You got to be pretty well optimized to be able to pull that off. Well, I was impressed by those guys. So uh, hopefully that makes sense for you, Aaron. I will be, I don't think I will make the master's climb. Probably it's been a couple of years since I've done one of these competitions on my second competition. I was signed up for uh, one or two and then COVID hit and it kind of shut everything down for a while, which is quite the disappointment. Sweet. Yeah, it's, it's a good deal. I mean, they're not that expensive. They're super fun. Um, and you get to network with a lot of cool guys too. So 10 out of 10 would recommend if you like, if you're into tree climbing, you want to up your game, it's a good way to do it. So today, the hard part is I got to get on a plane tomorrow. I got to sort through all my gear and figure out what exactly I want to bring, which is always a hard decision because I use a lot of different gear and I like them each for kind of different scenarios, but um, I got to pick and choose. I get a lot of questions online, uh, YouTube especially, like, oh, what's your favorite climb system and whatnot? And uh, this kind of <laughs> proves it that I really, really like the zigzag. I have a hard time getting away from that. It's, it's one of my favorites. It's so reliable, it's so consistent. It, I always feel really confident when I'm using it. It's hard to beat.
that. I gotta clean up some carabiners too. I know I've got some carabiners that are getting sticky. And I'm gonna try and keep my weight of the bag to less than 75 pounds, which is gonna be interesting. One of the things you gotta make sure you have is a couple of throw lines. Having more than one throw line is a big is really useful, especially in the throw line competition, because usually like it's easy to get one snagged, and if it's snagged, then you're just kind of hosed. So I don't wanna don't wanna deal with that. But if you guys got questions, just figured I'd go live. I'm I'm planning on doing these more often. So those of you who may not know, I am getting out of the tree residential tree game. I'm I'm not I sold my chipper, sold my little ditch witch. I'm leaving that uh and focusing entirely on education. So I want to uh, help coach other tree companies that are starting out uh, into being more profitable. Do you have to learn not to fear heights? Uh, that's, that's a good question. Um, yes, yes, and yes. I, I definitely am a little afraid of heights. That's probably one of the reasons why I'm quitting. It's, it's always stressful. But um, the level of heights, like... The, the height where the fear really sets in and I have trouble thinking and I have trouble making good decisions um, got higher and higher the longer I did it. So at first, you know, once I was 30 feet off the ground, I started feeling nervous. Things got hard. I didn't like it. It was really uncomfortable. It was really stressful. But as the years went by and as I was in more trees and exposed to more situations, um, I got more comfortable to where, you know, by the end, I'm not really feeling nervous unless I'm up a long way up uh, unless I'm 60 feet or more usually that's when I start to really get uncomfortable but that still happens all the time we got a lot of trees we got 120 foot trees 150 foot ponderosas I mean that's not that unusual uh, out here in California where I am right now so so I still spend a good bit of time way above my comfort zone but you learn to focus on what's the next thing you got to do and you kind of learn different techniques and strategies to get over that but Really what I liked about tree work was just the process of optimizing my game. You know, like I, I started out just climbing and then as I got better and learned more and did more, um, I started to see the potential of running a crew. And then as I've been running a crew, it's like, there's just so many little things that can optimize how much work a crew can do. And, and that, that was fun has just working through all that process of, of uh, getting better and better, but then also realizing how much more you can do and how much more efficient, how much more money you can make ultimately is the bottom line. It's like, that was my question. How can I make this the most profitable thing I could possibly be doing? Um, and in the end, I made a killing. Like I really did well on the tree service side. Uh, so much so that I've got, I can quit. I can live how I want to for, for probably a couple of years if I wanted to. Um, but basically I'm gonna take all that money and use it to switch gears and do more education, do more teaching, uh, build mm -hmm. online content because that's just more fun i just like it more um and honestly i'm a better teacher than i am an arborist so i'm excited to be able to do that to help other tree companies succeed and be profitable and be safe uh bring that injury count down had a couple of other questions there uh how old am i oh take a guess um just kidding i'm turning 30. it's like Roe burnham um, and have i ever fallen ah, we all fall what do you mean by fallen i mean uh, I don't know. They're probably the worst. I don't know. I've, I've had a lot of little slips and bumps and things. Nothing serious. I've never been to the hospital because of something that happened to the tree. Um, I came off the end of my rope like three feet above the ground one time and landed on a stick and that hurt. That was uncomfortable. But uh, other than that, no, I haven't had a bad fall and I don't intend to ever have one. You know, there's no reason to. You should always be tied in twice. The redundancy. There's ways to avoid falling out of the tree. And it is your prerogative and life-saving necessity to do so. What would be your best advice for someone who would want to get into the education side of arboriculture? Do you mean like, do you want to teach arboriculture or you want to um, learn? What do you mean there? From all gear. Yeah, I've, I've uh, actually got a couple things from all gear. They're pretty good price. Their budget stuff's pretty good and, and they've got some splicing. I actually have a, a crane sling I use of theirs with a Dyneema core that I really like. Um, yeah, uh, let's see, who was that? Ba, ba, ba. Yeah, Nicholas, what, do you, what, do you, what exactly are you curious about there as far as getting into education? Um, what is your best advice for a new climber? 
um, climb slow, climb safe, and don't let anyone push you. Um, but but push yourself if you if you can. You know if you if you can be smart and be and think about what you're doing. Um, don't let anyone stop you. Don't let anyone say no because you can. It's just a matter of being safe about it, right? Yeah, take your time. It's there's no reason to better to better to go slow than be dead, right? This um, the the game of tree work is a game of uh, of controlling the variables, right? So trees are are hazardous because there's so many potential things that could happen, um, and your job as a tree person is to minimize the number of things that might potentially happen so that anything that can happen is acceptable, right? For example, if you're going to fall a big tall tree, well, I could cut into a bunch of little pieces, but then any one of those little pieces might bounce and cause a problem, or maybe they'll snag a rope, or maybe they'll land wrong or whatever. But maybe if I fall the whole tree, then I can put it in one spot. Well, if I can't be sure about where I'm going to put it, then I can set two ropes in it. And now I'm going to make sure that it's going to go in the one spot that I want it to. And so I've eliminated all the possible outcomes so that the only outcomes that are possible are ones that are acceptable to me and that really matters when you're climbing because you want to eliminate anything that could happen that could kill you <laughs> oh yes teach okay well i don't know if i could help you figure out how to teach this is something i'm figuring out right now um you got to be be excellent first you know that's that's the hard part ideally you know when you're when you're learning how to teach you, you got to know you got to know 10 times more than what you're teaching at any given point. This isn't something where you can uh, like you know, a lot of sports, you can kind of know just a little bit more than the crew. Uh, and, and that's okay because you could just stay one, one day ahead of, of the sports team and you could be an effective teacher, but that's just not the case in tree work In tree work. You got to know so much more than what you're, what you're saying, because you could very easily say something that puts someone in danger in a weird situation. And, and you really want to avoid doing that if at all possible, right? Preferred climb size to climb on? Oh, I don't care. I climb on whatever rope I got. Um, at this point, most of my ropes, they're old enough that they've kind of swollen. Uh, ro ro uh, ropes that you start out, they kind of start out slim and then they get fluffier. Um, I think everything I got is probably close to 12 millimeters now. Um, I really like the Samson Voyager, which is a little bit on the thick side. I think it's right about 12 mil, um, but just because it's big and easy to hold and it's pretty soft and knots well. But for lightweight, I'm impartial to the, the Ivy series and like Yale XTC Blue Moon. Those are all kind of the same 24 strand. Um, I like those for kind of going back and forth between double and single. Um, and I like my Twiffa Burger uh, Ecstatic for my single line stuff. It's, uh, it performs well. Really well. I like the super static line. Very smooth and, uh, and durable. They hold up well. Gone to the ISA certified arborist. I have done the uh, ISA certified arborist. It's not so bad. Um, I've, I've done a couple other. Yeah, you don't need the ISA to climb. That's true. Uh, you can just start climbing. And I've actually, I'm putting together right now. I use the Akimbo all the time. I love that device. But uh, I, I only use it on ropes that I don't use for conifers. If I'm in a conifer or anything that's going to be real pitchy, I wrote, that stays in the bag. I, I like the zigzag if I'm in something that might have, uh, have pitch or sap because the zigzag is super reliable, super consistent all the time. Um, I just want to tell you guys, I'm putting together a part-time arborist course. So for those of you guys who are maybe, uh, maybe you're working for a line clearance crew, or you just like tree work, you've done it on the side here and there, or you want to do it on the side because you started learning some things, you're starting to acquire some, some climbing gear. Um, this course I'm putting together should take you through most of the basics that you would need to know or want to know uh, about starting your own sort of side business as a part-time tree climber, whether that's contract climbing or doing small side jobs. Um, I'm gonna kind of have it geared towards doing side jobs because uh, there's a few ways that you can actually be really productive and make really good money without putting in that many hours if you have the right tools and some basic climbing knowledge and basic climbing kit. So I'm gonna kind of go through that process over the course of three days. Um, and that's the Part-Time Arborist Academy. So you can actually sign up for that on my website now, 
that's coming up in just a few weeks here. I'll be pushing that. I'm going to have a couple ads out, so more details, but um, strategytrees.com, I'll actually have, have the details of the event there on my website. Ah, uh, you know, the funny thing about the U.S. here, especially with tree work, the academic side of things, that they're not that serious about it. So um, if you if you get a forestry degree, then you can kind of take some shortcuts, um, but it's not necessary per se. You can actually just start working and then end up getting the certifications you need. Uh, but forestry degree can help. Um, there's like biology degrees might help you get a spot as an arborist for a company where you're not climbing. If you want to be a production climber though, your best bet is just to start with line clearance. Um, those guys will get you some experience. They'll get you up in a tree and they've got decent benefits. So that's a, that's a good way to get started out here. It's pretty easy to do. I mean, like the, the accessibility is not bad as far as trades go. Like you can get in and start making pretty good money really quick, especially if you come in with a little bit of knowledge. Like if you've had my part-time Arborist Academy course, or even you just follow my videos, you buy the gear, like on the, by the budget buyer's guide. Like if you come in with that gear and a little bit of knowledge, you can actually get up a tree and get down and make smart cuts and be decent with a saw. You'll start out way above minimum wage. Um, and the climbers union out here in California is killer. Like you can make really good money at the climbers union out here. So it's a great trade to get into if you like being outside, push the limits a little bit. Would you consider climb on cherry bomb, blue cray, small gear? Yeah, those are both good lines. I haven't actually played with them. I've seen them a little bit. Um, I'm from ca here in California, and my local arbor store actually has those, and so I've I've used them. But they, uh, or I mean, I've, I've seen them and I've played with them in my hand, but I've not actually used them. They seem pretty pretty similar to most of the other 24 strands. Um, you know, I I think they would probably work fine, and they're not that expensive either. So. Not a bad choice at all. They're definitely professional lines. So it's not like you're not going to go wrong. You're not going to go too wrong. Um, my one thing that I recommend, guys, especially if they're only going to have one climb line, is to have one that's not that stretchy. Because some of them, like I had a Tachyon by Teufelberger, it, it's really nice in hand for double rope especially, but it's kind of stretchy. So it's just not uh, not ideal if you're going to switch back and forth between double and single rope. And I do a lot of single rope, and I highly recommend you learn how to do single rope technique it's a huge efficiency uh, upgrade. You know, it's easier on your body. It's faster to get around. Uh, you can do multiple redirects without too much trouble. Uh, set it from the ground really quick. So there's a lot of advantages to single rope uh, if you can figure it out. Definitely recommend that. So I'm not sure how stretchy Cherry Bomb or Blue Craze is. Um, I know that the Yale versions, XTC, um, Poison Ivy, uh, what's the other one? There's a few different Ivy ones. Blue Moon, those are all kind of similar with their stretchiness and, and hand feel. When your arborist program to climb for most companies and a bachelor's degree to teach. Hmm, I see. Yeah, well, I mean, if you need the bachelor's degree, um, the thing is, and and like Nick, uh, Nicholas, the thing about our world today is that Virtually all the information you'd want to know is available online. And if it's not available for free online, you could buy the books uh, through any number of services. And so education, like you can be really, really well educated without a degree. Uh, and yes, while a company might want to see a degree, you as an individual can teach and be good and, and competent without necessarily having a company. And so that's what I did. I've been to school a few times. I tried to go to school for engineering, but when I ran the numbers, it actually didn't make sense compared to doing tree work. Um, and so I just stuck with tree work and I'm glad I did at this point. But I just started teaching. You know, I started the YouTube channel. I started telling what I knew. Um, and as I've learned more, I've taught more and it's gotten more professional and I've gotten more advanced. Um, and, you know, and, and it's it's expertise that I've learned on the job. Now, I try to stay away from areas that I don't know. Like, I'm not really good with the horticultural side of things. Um, like, I'm not going to be able to be the, I'm not the best guy to teach someone how to transplant properly, um, even tree care. Like, I can do some of the basics, and I know some general rules, but I'm not a great tree care resource. So I just stay out of those arenas that I'm not as familiar with, and I, and I have connections that I will forward those people to if they want to know. And people appreciate the honesty. You know, there, there's... Um, there's no shortage of people who will BS about something they don't know. Uh, but, but if you stay in your zone of expertise, stay with what you know, then that's worth doing. You know, like it, it, you can, you can teach 
what you know, and that's and that's important. Probably the Akimbo on ecstatic, uh, such a rope displacement. I haven't had issues with it uh, other than when I've got a little bit of sap in it. So right now my ecstatic rope isn't totally clean. And so I don't actually use it on that one with the akimbo because the akimbo is super picky about having a clean rope. Um, I'm not even going to bring the akimbo on this co climbing competition uh, because I, I just, it's just touchy. And most of all these events, I can set up my rope ahead of time. So I don't actually need, I don't need to have, I don't need to have uh, something that's quick on and off. Like the biggest advantage of the Kimbo is it's compact and it's easy to change between ropes, which makes it great for doing work, but it's not really all that helpful for the tree climbing competition. Um, I like it on the ecstatic, but uh, yeah, I don't know. It's Akimbo is so finicky. I, I prefer the Akimbo on ropes that get a little fluffier. So the ecstatic and like adrenal line, they don't get fluffy with wear. They just stay really smooth. Uh, and the akimbo is a little more forgiving on a rope that kind of fluffs up a little bit. Something more like Samson, um, Samson 24 strands, or like even I've got a Pelican uh, 24 strand and it gets fluffy and that's a better, uh, it's more effective that way. Um, it's just easier. Like I think it's, it, it's less likely to get stuck. And uh, so anyway, yeah, that's the uh, thoughts on the akimbo there. Climb with the rope wrench. Yeah, I will bring a rope wrench. I may or may not climb with it. We'll see. I've got a, I'll probably mostly use the zigzag where I can. And uh, probably zigzag and rope wrench and anything where I can use SRT. But uh, some of the competitions is actually still faster to DRT, depending on like the work climb. The last one I did, I think I was DRT because I had such a nice clear tie-in point and I could get around real easy. Single rope setup. Depends. So that's the funny thing. If I'm doing a really big wide canopy tree, usually I'll set multiple ropes. And so I want a setup that I can switch between. So I'll use the Akimbo or the Rope Runner Pro most of the time. Uh, occasionally I will use a uh, hitch cord with like a notch. What, what's that one? The Fusion Tether. I really like the Fusion Tether if you're a hitch cord person. Um, and so I'll just occasionally throw that on. But usually it's the Akimbo or the Rope Runner so long as I'm not um, in a sappy, pitchy tree. If I'm in a pitchy tree, like if I'm doing, like I'm using single line to work a, a big spar, like I'm doing a big pine removal, 100 and something foot pine, and I want to be able to get to the ground and I don't have a 200, I don't want to use a 200 foot rope, I will choke. And so I tend to, I'll use it, but not uh, so frequently. I will bring it for this climbing competition though, because it's a good quick single rope device. I'll also bring the Taz Love 2. I don't know if you guys know that. This is one of those climbing competition things. I'm not crazy about it in, in actual work, the Taz Love. It's just too on off. It's not intuitive or particularly ergonomic. But for the speed ascent climb, it's the fastest one put on the rope. Uh, so I do like, I like to use it for that. Short rope branch tether. No, I don't have experience. Um, the I like the idea of the short rope branch tether. The only reason I would be a little bit hesitant myself personally is that if you've got the short wrench tether, then it limits how long of a friction hitch cord you can use uh, because you don't want the you need the hitch cord to catch before it hits the tether. And so if you've got a, a long hitch cord and a short tether, then you got to get your knot just perfect and it, it does shrink up the whole system kind of nicely, but it just may not be the best thing um, in, in every scenario. If you've got a, a system that's dialed, like you know which hitch cord works with which rope and you know that your hitch, your friction hitch is nice and short, I think that's a good way to go. But um, I didn't play with hitch cord all that often, uh, so it wasn't something that made sense for me. No, nope, I like it. Rope, rope, runner, rope runner Pro, DRT is just fine. Same with the um, Unisender and the Akimbo. They all work double rope just fine. Um, the only reason, yeah, I mean, the, they're all, they're all I would say, just as good double rope. I tend to run them a little bit loose so that um, when I'm in single line, sometimes they creep just a little bit. I'll lock it off. But I definitely, uh, I definitely will use them all because I almost never... I will, I will use double rope technique almost every day, even if most of the day I single rope. So like a lot of the times I'll set a single rope to get into the tree. 
and then I'll switch over to a double rope to do some moving around because it's just easier. Um, if it's especially like wide canopy stuff or I'm trying to move between a lot of different branches, like there's just a lot of scenarios where I like, uh, I like double rope technique. Just want to shout out again, guys, for those of you who are starting out, you know, welcome to the industry. Uh, it's, it's a challenge. It's, it's daring. There's, there's a lot of room to grow. There's a lot of knowledge to gain. Um, but it's, it's a good place to be. There's money to be made. Uh, you know, be safe though, climb safe, pay attention to people who obviously know what they're doing. You know, pay attention to who, who to learn from. Cause there's, there's some knuckleheads out there who are real opinionated about their stupid old school methods that kind of work, but there's, they're inferior to what's available. Uh, the techniques that have been developed in like the last 10 to 15 years have transformed the industry. They're so much safer. Uh, they're so much more effective. So if you're learning from somebody who's, you know, 50 plus, probably they're not teaching you the most up-to-date, uh, safe, efficient methods. And so just be aware of that. And, and you know, don't be afraid to educate yourself uh, on that as well. Real broad trees, sometimes want to get switched to SRT and get a mechanical. It's well worth it, man. You won't regret it. But one of the things I always tell people who are hesitant about buying something expensive when it comes to tree work, uh, I, tell, I tell this to everyone. Your, your harness and your climb system you interact with every day, like for hours a day. You, this is like one of your most interactive devices. So if it makes your life 2% easier, 2% every day is a huge gain. Um, if you imagine that 2% translates to being 2% more profitable, 2% more profitable on a thousand dollar job is $20. If you're saving $20 every day or every other day, you know, that, that adds up quick. Most of these devices are less than 500 bucks. You know, $20 into $500 is what 20 days or something like that's, that adds up quick. And so the, these devices, like I've, I, over the years, I've bought all of them. And even though most of them don't get used, I'm happy I have them and it's worth it just for the rare occasion that I bring them out and use them for, for whatever it is that they're best for. Especially the Akimbo Rope Runner Pro uh, and the Unisender, like those three are all so much quicker and efficient about getting on and off ropes and their ability to switch between single line and double line uh, makes them really useful anytime I've got a clean rope. So like my zigzag, even though it's my favorite device, it doesn't get used that much just because the extra time it takes me to run my whole rope through that thing, I just kind of leave it on a rope. Uh, and I end up using these other ones, even though they're a little bit more annoying than the zigzag, I'll just tolerate that because they're so quick to get up in the tree and they're so efficient. So uh, you won't regret it. You know, buy once, cry once, get the thing that's going to work. Um, if you get used to the Unicenter, it's a great device, but it's kind of annoying to use rope runner does everything pretty well like uh it's it's pretty dang smooth it's pretty dang easy it's hard to do wrong uh and the akimbo is super finicky but what it does it does best like it really is a nice device too so anyway i i, I you can't really go too wrong with any of them except the akimbo like i wouldn't have the akimbo as my only device because if you ever do a conifer and you get sap on your rope then you're kind of hosed um, it just doesn't work well after that. Well, guys, thanks for checking in. Hopefully some of that was useful for you. Uh, like I said, I'm going to get ready for my climb competition here. Uh, if you check back another half an hour, 20 minutes, I'll like let, have it all laid out and I'll show you what I'm going to bring and uh, make some uh, kind of talk through why I chose each piece and hopefully that could be helpful for you. But uh, anyway, it was good talking to you guys. Stay safe out there uh, and I will catch you next time.